What's up, my friends? In this video, we are gonna cover data from over 340 app sprees. These are app sprees that had between nine and 15 applications submitted. So big boys, open all your tabs up, fire them off one by one, browser by browser type situation. And I've got a ton of data, as you can see on the screen, that I need to share with you. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first is, let's start here at this data. First thing to notice, this is all from quarter two of 2023, and then we're cross-referencing that from quarter four data of 2022. So collectively, there's 338 app sprees and 345. So what is that, 600 and something, 70 something, 80 something um, app sprees all together, just to give you that as, as a reference point, which is kind of crazy because in the community, a lot of times we're shooting videos that are like onesie twosie, you know, like here's a guy's app spree or a girl's app spree, right? Here's one person. Well, this this is collectively, you know, hundreds that are all essentially going through the same process. The people that shared this data with me, which I'll talk more about and cover that in this video as well, I'm more concerned about the data. So what I really wanna focus on is the data, not who provided it and what services they offer, et cetera, et cetera. That's for you to decide, but there's a lot that I wanna show you here. So first things first, let's start over here and talk about the ranking systems. And then we're gonna talk about the pre-approvals. We're gonna basically break down every single part of this across the, the top there. Okay, so scorecard is, we've got three for platinum, three for gold, silver, then we got four for copper, we got bronze, and then these two are newer that they're testing out. And those correlate with a FICO score over here and HHI is household income. If you notice, the household income starts at the tippity top platinum one at 200,000 and at the bottom, it is just 80,000. And not to mention the lowest is what, this 50 right here, 40,000 on silver. Household income looks like it varies from 40,000 up to 200,000, all right? So there's your reference range there. Next, credit scores, we've got from 470 up to 800, but it looks like the, the real lowest Lowest is 600. I'm not sure how many this actually was. How many was this? Eight people. 470 is it's kind of crazy too. But um, I don't think they had much success with this. And you see here, K's are strikeouts. So they had strikeouts in this. And, and this is like chopping up their data because again, they're trying to service lower and lower into subprime. And so that's gonna mess up your data always. We'll focus on zinc and above, I think for all of this, right? Let's talk about this pre-approval. This company has basically um, created a software, an algorithm that you fill out a pre-approval with them and they go out and they are tied into a bunch of APIs and they've got a bunch of algorithmic function, functions that they're using and they are coming up with these numbers. Now, if you wanna know how accurate this is, which it's kind of crazy how accurate this is, we just have to look all the way to the right. So the right is where the accuracy starts to come in and you notice that they're highlighting a number here. It's not the highest number that they're highlighting. It is the percentage of people that hit the bottom baseline of the pre-approval that they've got right here. So 50K is your bottom or 40K or 40K, 35, whatever, that's the number that you're now seeing highlighted over here because they're measuring their accuracy. They're not going for highest dollar amount or anything like that. They're measuring their accuracy across this data. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanna make clear. That being said is they're hitting like, I mean, over, up until you get into copper, they're hitting 80% success rate. Look at this, 94% which is absolutely crazy to think about because remember, this data is from 2023. High inflation, 5% interest rates, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's what that piece is. So the pre-approval is pretty accurate. Okay, and you'll notice that the pre-approval shifts and moves around based on credit scores, household income, et cetera. The next one is inquiries. So they like to see low inquiries on the credit file. Okay, that's pretty standard stuff. So zero to three, zero to four, zero to 10, all the way down. File age is next. And this is crazy to think that there's people with 10 plus years of average age of account that they're just like having walked through the door. So you can tell that they work with a very certain kind of clientele. I can also tell you that people like GW uh, in the community would not be a good fit to actually use a service like this is because they would be an anomaly. And these guys are trying to bat down the middle with a very specific type of profile and type of uh, person. Somebody like that who's already got, you know, 400, 600, a million dollars in, you know, available credit funding, that would not be who they wanna work with because that would be a very challenging file for them to work with, make sense? In the same way that somebody with, you know, a super thin file and a 400 credit score is challenging in their own right. So it's like both extreme ends of the spectrum. Okay, average funding. This is where it starts to get good. And this confirms a lot of stuff by the way that we talk about on this channel. So if you're brand new to this channel or you really have no clue what's going on with credit funding, a lot of the stuff we talk about on a regular basis, and believe me, we're not the only channel, is proven correct and proven true with a data sample like this.
So average funding, you see the highest amount is obviously at the top with the best credit scores, highest household income, highest or oldest age. You know, inquiries play a role into that, but average credit funding across 28 people was $105,445. Let this sink in, 28 people, that was their average. On the low end was 25, 300, on the high end was 277,500. All right, now let's kind of, you know, jump down. Here's platinum two and three. Let's just graze through that. We got 775 as credit score and 100 to 150,000 in household income. And you see that we start to get no real difference in file age and about $7,000 in difference here. So average here was 90,000 and average here was 97,000. And that's another 28 people and 37 people. So right here, we have got almost 100 people in terms of data set that has provided what we just went through. And then it tells you percentage of pool and then low and high, Ks are strikeouts, and we already covered this whole uh, chunk here, right? So hopefully you're up to speed, even though I didn't go through that in, in order, okay? Next is gold. Gold, and then one and two. So this is on the prequal, they were told 35,000 to 70,000 across the boards for all three. And you're looking at about a 715 to a 760. So I'm gonna assume that a lot of people fall into this category, especially low 700s, that seems where a lot of people are at. Household income from 75,000 up to 150 here. Again, just about the same with inquiries. Age, just about the same. But now let's start, take a look at this. We say a, a semi-dramatic difference in credit funding. There is a break right here between 740 and 760, where we got an average of 64,000 all the way up to an average of 83,000. And then again, from here, 760s to 775, we went from 83,000 to 90,000. Not a huge jump, but definitely a very sizable jump between the 740s in the 760s, that's worth noting. And again, we see that. We see that on the ground with people going through app sprees, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You can find this in like my FICO forms too, but you're looking at a lot of different app sprees and credit data to then come up with these conclusions, right? But now that we're, I don't know, three plus years, we see things like this too. Okay, so 10 people in this pool, 31 here and 40. So yes, so far this is the largest one. Uh, next is Zinc, that is the largest, right? Yeah, so Zinc, which is a 600 credit score. Again, subprime, there's gonna be more people in subprime than at the top of a prime or, or credit category, right? So 40 is the next highest. 715 is the credit score. 40 people fall into that, right? Average funding of $68,438. Again, that's nothing to sneeze at, especially considering the current economic climate, right? All right, so on the low end, 9,500, oof. On the high end, 238,205. Pretty good, like those are um, very, very solid numbers. Through the, uh, through the gold here. Next, silver, this is 700. So all three of these are 700. The uh, pre-approval was all the same here. And then you've got household income is really the big variable. So we have, for some reason, 80,000 down here, 40,000 and then 50,000. So again, this speaks to like how they're ranking these people, which I really have no idea the inner workings of this algorithm. Um, so I can't speak to that. Ages right here, five, four, and nine. And then average funding. So we got 46,000, 64,000, and 50,000. So this to me, this one in the middle is an anomaly unless I'm missing something because this was only 40,000 in household income, four plus years of uh, age, and so 64,000 they got. I guess my assumption, my working assumption on that would be that they didn't have a lot of credit funding. So it wasn't that it was easier to get or that they were high, higher qualified, it's that there was more targets to hit. If I'm wrong, then you know maybe, uh, maybe they'll let me know or uh, you guys can chime in. 35, so the largest in this section here was uh, that fit into this category, silver one, okay? And that's 10% of the pool. Low end, 5,500, high end, 200,000. So maybe they just had a couple and that skewed the data. It'd have to be a good amount. It'd have to be a handful of people got a higher end. But let's quickly go through the rest of this. 9,000 on the low end, 129,000 here. Remember this one was 80,000, so the highest technically. 8,500 low end, 105,000 on the high end. All right, battery just died on the camera, so I'll try and pick it up. That, that is my cue to speed up. Okay, uh, what do we got in copper? What stands out here? 15 to 25,000 is the range for the pre-approval, and our range of credit scores is from 660 to 700. So again, there's a large amount of the population that fits into this, you know, just beneath that 685 and, you know, in that pocket. And we've got 50 to 70,000 in terms of household income. This pretty much stayed the same, zero to four, zero to five, zero to four, zero to three. Age, again, looks about the same. Here we We've got some noticeable mentions in the 680s with 50,000 stated income. 52,000 was the average versus 23,000 here with a 700 credit score. So again, credit score isn't the, always the magical number. You know, household income comes into play. And again, I don't know the other factors in this data set, but pretty interesting to see. This is definitely an anomaly. So there's two of them we found so far. 23,000 and there's 10 people in there. 37,000, 41,000 here, 660, 70,000 
and there was only five people there. You can follow this data along over here if you want. And then, you know, bronze and et cetera, et cetera. This is like lower credit scores. Here, outside of this one, I'm just gonna cover this one because this had the largest amount of the whole data set. So 10,000 to 20,000 was the pre-approval amount. 600 credit score, 50,000 uh, household income, and the average was 31,000 in credit. The low end was zero. I don't know if that's an anomaly or if that actually is somebody got zero. And the high end is 100,000. With that type of credit score at a 700, you can roll donut. You can definitely strike out on that. What I wanted to attempt to show you here by going through this data is that first off, yes, the credit profile, the age, the stated income, all of these are important factors. You should know this by now. Um, we talk about this ad nauseum. That being said is also too, having a strategy with your app spree, absolutely, obviously works. I mean, there's no funny business that these guys are doing. They're not creating any fraud in any sort of way. They're just going through and legitimately doing a larger app spree, nine to 15 apps, which I mean, I even kind of shy away from. They also don't like sole proprietor credit. This is mostly on the business side. So they want people with an existing business two years or older. Again, we talk about sole proprietor credit. So it's just different angles, different strokes for different folks, right? So it's not that this is right and this is wrong. Both of them are gonna get you there. It's really just who's piloting the, the, uh, the car there, right? So the last thing that I wanted to point out here is through quarter two of 2023, again, like I said, inflation, interest rates, et cetera, we actually saw larger credit funding on the high end and higher credit funding on the low end than in the past. So quarter four of 2022, which things were starting to heat up then, I believe, but interest rates were nowhere near where they are now. So they were able to get an average of 97,000 versus 85. I think a couple of these are lower through the middle here. 69,000 on gold set versus 73. So before it was better. Again, the middle ground takes a hit, but the biggest hit you're gonna see here is copper. So copper, we had 660s to 700. So that is really who took the biggest hit in the funding. Look at that, that's almost 20,000. And then bronze 43 versus 34. So they got more zinc, they got more, right? So just the middle ground, that, that copper area. Well, it's really copper on up uh, to gold. Okay, so that middle ground took the biggest hit, but the bottom, <laughs> The bottom did better, okay? And even close to the bottom, zinc did a whole lot better and the top did better. I thought that was interesting, especially comparing and contrasting like the, the economic conditions of it. So where did this data come from? This data came from LendCred, we'll bring up the website right now. They actually are a full service, done for you, apps free service, right? So they are business solution, you know, software based company that does apps sprees for people. I know that they're looking for a very specific kind of person, but if you're interested, I would just suggest to reach out with the link. It's not a special link. We're not getting paid or kickbacks of any kind for this. Um, just let them know that you watch this video on Wall monkey i don't know if they're going to do something special for you at this point or not again i just wanted to share the data with you but if you are looking for somebody to do it for you and do it right and do it big i think these guys are great the industry average when you're starting to go around to guys that can get you credit funding is somewhere between seventy-five thousand and one hundred and fifty thousand on the high side again on the low end you might not like that and then a lot of people are going to get excited on the high end just please double check how these people are actually getting you to that high end number. If it's not building your business or your business credit, which I think should be the most important bottom line goal that you've got, or if they're using shady means or something questionable that uh, ethically you have a problem with, you should probably not use them regardless if they can get you a million dollars in credit funding because it's not worth it. The adverse action that might happen in the long run, et cetera, et cetera. Due diligence on the people that you're trying to use. But anyways, what else do you wanna see? What data did I miss? Is there any corollaries that you're seeing looking through this that uh, that I absolutely you know, dropped the bag on? Also too, what other data do you wanna see to go along with this? Maybe we can pressure them into giving us more, but there you go, over 600 app sprees finished and dusted, and that is some cool data to look at. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Hey, did you know that we actually have an entire credit community set up and established? It's been running for almost three years now, and there's everyone in that community from credit rebuilders all the way on up to multimillionaires that have have real estate investment portfolios, right? So we all know that getting around like-minded individuals leads to success. Success leaves clues, right? Regardless of where you're at, I guarantee you that there will be somebody in this community that is in a similar or same position as you. If you wanna join this community, it's completely free. Join this link right here that's showing on the screen right now, and we'll see you in there. Hey, you should subscribe. 60% of you are not subscribed yet, right there. Okay, bye.